Happy New Year, everyone. Now that 2021 is here, let's kick things off with a great movie. Right? Ava, 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 Ava. So Ava is about this assassin who works for a black ops organization, taking out high profile targets. But who has this inner conflict about whether she should be killing these people she's been asked to. And after a job that goes wrong, she finds herself in a fight for survival against friends and foe alike. I guess my overall feelings for the movie were that it could have been good. It feels like a movie with the right intentions, following the guidelines and the steps to become a successful rogue agent movie, but just misses the beat on everything. The director, Tate Taylor, also worked on A Girl on a Train and Ma, which when I think about it, doesn't really surprise me at all. Okay, let's start out with the positives. So the girl in question, Ava, played by Jessica Chastain. I'm sure we all know by now how great of an actress Jessica Chastain is and my God, does she try and make this movie work. She looks great in the action scenes if it wasn't for the bad choreography, and the emotion that she brings to her character in this film would have still been any other movie that wasn't this one. Or, you know, maybe a, a film that was better written, I suppose. This movie is a big culprit of useless information, or at least having you spend time focusing on things that never pay off. There's a few decent video essays on YouTube that go into this topic quite well, especially with movies like The Suicide Squad. They're very easy to find online, I'd recommend doing so. But it's essentially that sort of idea. Going into a bit of a spoiler territory here, but you shouldn't really watch this movie anyway. Ava lets us, the audience, know that she's struggling with alcohol abuse and warns us of the effects it would have if she touched another bottle of alcohol. And yet being reminded several times of the dangers, there is none. Sure, she drinks a few mini bottles of vodka at the end, but there's no consequences. She's hardly more loopy in terms of her coherency during the final fight, and whilst we were getting this rewarding scene of her almost contemplating suicide, it was horrendously rushed. As in, she drinks his bottle of vodka and then suddenly goes crazy in a matter of seconds. Does, does the director not know how alcohol works? It doesn't take seconds to kick in. And the camera movements in this film, again, another example of easy steps missed in the playbook. They do all the typical shots that you expect to be, but with slightly out of rhythm editing. And it makes the fight scenes feel a lot less impactful than what they should be. And every now and then you'd have this weird camera movement, which would have you focus on the whole scenery to only then jankily just zoom into one part that you're staring at really off-puttingly and in turn compromises the whole shot. And when silly things like that take you out the story, you're just gonna find it a lot easier to poke holes into the rest of it. Her whole character is literally about having second thoughts on these people that she's supposed to kill, even going as far as to asking him what it was they did wrong so that she could justify her assassinations. But then ironically kills 50 to 60 guards throughout the whole movie trying to escape from different scenarios. You know, people that probably have families to feed and a wife and kids, that just trying to do the jobs, protecting the building, but no, she just kills them without a second thought. It's just as if they forgot their character's whole purpose. Colin Farrell's in here as well, but he's wasted in it. He's kind of the final boss in this film, but is hilariously anticlimactic and just plays the last fight like an absolute idiot. John Malkovich, bless him, tries to make his character to work and you know what, for the most part, he nearly did. He actually has what I think is a pretty good fight scene in here. In fact, probably the only good fight scene in here. But again, when you stop taking the story seriously, you can't take the cringe lines that the characters are saying seriously either. So it kind of falls flat on its face, unfortunately. And swinging back into information that never pays off, we have Colin Farrell's daughter, who is also an agent, I believe. I wonder who plays her. I, I mean, it doesn't even matter. You could have taken a character out of the film entirely and it would be in the exact same movie. And we get a few good scenes giving her attention, which doesn't equate to anything. She actually does nothing. It's so weird. I think it might have been maybe a sequel bait, you know, that she's going to be the villain in the next movie. Bad idea. You're never going to get one. And, and the music. Oh my god, the music. In particular, this weird one fucking track which played endlessly, making this slick agent movie feel like a cheesy as fuck ripoff from a Matrix movie in the 2000s or something. Who the hell signed off for that song to be used in every scene they could find? And this weird gambling mob boss lady who's kind of irrelevant to the film as well, but hey, Ava kills a lot of her henchmen, you know, unquestionably. You know, paid a normal salary just trying to get by in life, but no, that doesn't matter to her at all, you know, it's fucking... It's just stupid, man. This, this, 
This movie should have had everything it needed to be an easy to watch agent action flick, but just becomes this painful take on many better examples that we've seen before. I wouldn't recommend this one guys, maybe watch the Bourne trilogy or something, I, I, I don't know, anything but this. But let me know if you've seen Ava, what your thoughts in it are, hey maybe you liked it more than I did. If you liked this video please feel free to like and subscribe, it really helps out. And as always stay tuned for more reviews on movies, anime and video games. Until next time guys, take care, bye bye.